Well, what's up guys, Ben here, bringing you an interesting video today. I was about to go play golf, get it some practice in, start working on something so I've been sucking on stream with golf, but a huge CDL announcement dropped and I had to make a video. There's a lot of really interesting business news around the CDL, so let's take a look and break it down. All right, so this news dropped exactly at noon East Coast time with a blog post on the Call of Duty website. I'm reacting this into like real time. I haven't read this yet or record this video, so this is an FYI. If I start like thinking through things as we do it, um, you know, just bear with me. I'll have more, probably more like refined thoughts later on this week on a Flink episode. It starts off with a little bit of a forward from Daniel talking about how the league has evolved over when it got started. You know, there have been issues with teams and the economics around teams. Obviously, COVID-19, no one saw that come in. Um, and the subsequent, you know, trying to help teams kind of fund once or the business had to realign once COVID happened. Then it also talks about how they provided funding for team hosted events, guaranteeing revenue for teams and creating in-game team bundles, which... Uh, is a little bit at the end, but okay, all that. And there were some rumors of this behind the scenes that, you know, while the Overwatch League stuff was going on, that sort of teams were starting to talk with Activision Bigger Picture about uh, the future of the Call of Duty League. And it looks like they've agreed on um, some new agreements to amend or uh, modify their uh, CDL franchise or the CDL team agreements. There's some massive news in here, so let's take a look. First off, outstanding entry fees will be eliminated and any fees previously collected from teams will be returned in full. I'm gonna read this text word for word from you. While we paused collection of these payments years ago, we are permanently removing this obligation while also injecting capital back in the league. So the 25 million we've talked about that some teams have paid a couple million on, that couple million is coming back now and everybody owes zero. So uh, there's probably a couple of losers in this. Anyone that sold their spots to get out of the obligation at 25, million that could have been the league for free like energy like uh the original version one ownership i guess kind of dodge this one because they don't really get that money back maybe you know v1 and g2 had um some part of their agreement that would have accounted for the scenario but overall i think this is a massive w for everybody it means that the it's not going to be um incredibly different from a financial standpoint i assume for any new organizations to come in and uh get one of these existing spots i'm looking at you the los angeles gorillas looking to get out. So this is gets rid of sort of that economic barrier to entry. I still think the league and the owners are going to uh, still be kind of a step in making sure the right type of ownership uh, comes in to their standards, maybe not to our standards, but this is a huge one and it gets rid of that big talking we're pointing around the 25 million. And then money's coming back now, those teams, uh, which uh, they can pump right into player salaries, uh, facility costs, running events, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so this one I had heard a lot of rumors about. Teams will earn an increased revenue tied to sale of their in-game merchandise, e.g. team bundles, and now the champs bundle as well. And again, reading from the text here, we know how meaningful in-game bundles can be for teams who want to make sure they have increased ability to drive their own financial success. So we have talked about this a lot, that over the years, um, Call of Duty League uh, has not really handled the microtransaction world of Call of Duty well around the teams. The skins have been lazy. There hasn't been a lot of customization. They only do it once a year. I think now with an increased split and it seems like more synergy between the league, the business unit and the teams, I think this is a W. It's gonna be great for the fans. We get better skins. It's great for the teams because they can make more money from the skins. And look, you look at like models, like what goes on in the Riot Esports, like CSGO. Um, this is a huge economic lifeline for these teams. If they can make six figures, seven figures off of this um, you know, in-game merchandise, it, it covers their pure salary costs for uh, the teams and some extra staff members. So this one's a big W. I'm curious uh, what the percentage is going to. It's not specified here if it's like 70, 30, 60, 40. I guess I'll dive in and find out, but this one's a big W uh, for the teams. I'm sure the owners are very happy uh, and players that they also get a piece of this are happy as well. All right, this one is an interesting one. Recognizing that hosting large scale events are vile to teams in the CDL community, we will increase the existing event subsidy amounts for teams organizing live in-person events such as majors, opens, and champs. There has existed certain levels of event subsidies in the past. The numbers kind of change year to year. And I don't, um, this one gets weird for me because this starts to get across the line of what I used to work on and some knowledge I have there, but the numbers I could tell you were, you know, um, six figure-ish in, in nature, depending on the year and what kind of, um, what, what the nature of the subsidy was really attached to. Um, cause it was from stuff like, uh, supporting challengers and the cost around challengers to like supporting the events in general, the first year of the call of duty league, when there was a sort of big world circuit, there was, you know, um, a movement to really amortize costs, production costs, uh, production costs across all the events that would have had this year. So there was 
um, sort of a subsidy kind of folded in there. It's kind of changed scapes, but I'm really curious about what this number is moving to. Is this 100,000, 200,000? Is it a million? This is a W for teams. That being said, I still think um, from what I've seen internal and external, I still think the event RFP, the event bidding process for the teams needs to be a bit better. Boston, Dallas, AK Optic, and uh, Toronto always do a good job generally running their events. But we've seen with everybody else is kind of a mixed bag from uh, uh, poor venue choices to just not being able to run the event in general and the league having to pivot and cover their own costs. So this is good to uh, ensure that our cornerstone events continue to happen in some of those markets. And maybe as some of these new teams, I'm looking at you Atlanta face, start to think about maybe doing it in their own home market. This one could be really interesting. By the way, I actually do think Atlanta should be running. You guys ask it all the time in my chat. Atlanta phase, biggest one right now. Same with LA Thieves, two biggest ones I think should be um, running events because I think they would be big. Also New York subliners, but they haven't done one in a while. So you know, maybe they could also come around. Interesting one for the fourth one here. Teams will receive a two-year minimum guarantee of revenue so they continue investing in the Call of Duty League with more peace of mind. I assume that this one is to prevent any exits from some of the ownership groups by keeping them around at least for another uh, 24 months whenever this agreement occurs. So I think you'll then see, you'll still see potentially some ownership changing hands amongst people maybe at the bottom looking to exit. Um, now that they've sort of, you know, uh, uh, kind of secured a little bit of their downside. But I think for some of the cornerstone um, ownership groups and people that really enjoy the endemic thing, I think this this really does help them keep them in. I'm curious then though, still again, to see what teams maybe and what organizations maybe with the reduced franchise fees you're being zeroed out and all this stuff, try to get out this summer and then who actually approved for sale of ownership so either way i think this this one is a w like i don't really see any downside uh to this one at all and then you see at the bottom here and then i'll kind of wrap my thoughts you know a bunch of flavor text about you know our teams of the future of the league i want to thank our teams for discussions to make these changes a reality look i think at the end of the day it, it seems like they did a much better job with this situation than what happened with overwatch league mind you i think overwatch esports is in a tougher spot especially in north america in, in cod you don't really have that problem in the western world um, so it was more about um, trying to keep the structure of the league together. And I think there was definitely support from ownership to do that. And they end up, I think, agreeing on these four points. And I really don't see, I think we're getting into my final thoughts on this. I, I don't really see a lot of downside in here. I want to see some quotes from some ownership. I've been sort of uh, keeping my eye on Twitter for um, some owners to see if they're live reacting on Twitter. And I haven't seen any yet. So maybe in a fall video tomorrow, I'll kind of highlight those. Uh, and and community responses as they uh come in but i think in general this is good work from the teams in the league i think going into next year my biggest thing that i want to see coming out of this is one is you know from day one way better um mtx um drops i want to see the league have better jerseys going next year it's not really merch not really addressed in here that's a big missing piece i feel like the team jersey is a big opportunity for individuality on teams and i think they're missing out there the third thing is a more stable event structure every year we've had issues with events not happening if these changes incentivize the counter to get locked in earlier and the events actually happen and we get more than four majors we get five maybe six i think in the end it's well proven a w so i'm excited to see what happens to the league going forward i'm excited to see i think now with the fees being eliminated and uh uh collected fees going back to the themes i think we may see some new organizations come in so we all say liquid cloud nine pol yada 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 we might see some of those orgs come back in but i think in general for the team business this was a w and for the league um, in which there were some questions about what next year will look like. I think we're going to still see a little bit of this structure next year. Maybe a little bit of changes in how matches go down, events go down, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, but the league as a whole, I think, will be continuing at least for the next two years with this. All right, one more last thing that I thought about before in this video. With the reduction of the franchise fees, complete removal and the payback, it now opens up the path. And I think a big question in the league now is you could add four more teams. It's, there will be some upstart costs, but it's not the $25 million or whatever it would have been commitment. And so I'm curious now if we expand or those conversations of expanding, I'm gonna dive in and hopefully we can get someone like Daniel Sai, someone from Activision on, maybe an owner and kind of ask about the expansion question. But I think naturally that's a question that people are going to ask about now that we've seen uh, the uh, franchise fees completely removed. Uh, off the board so yeah big news uh uh again i was gonna go play golf but then i had to record this video so if you're wondering why i'm wearing like some white nike polo situation there you go uh let me know comments what you guys think about this w or l what are your thoughts uh we'll take a look uh, what i probably should do is in my video tomorrow i do a reaction video i should take a look at some of your comments so let me know what you guys think like if you enjoyed subscribe for more and as always guys we'll see you on the next one